abundantly above all that we could ask or think. It ain't no trouble or struggle that you can have that God cannot help you with. It ain't no struggle or trouble you can have that God cannot help you overcome. But he don't move at all. And sometimes the reason he don't move at all is because he's teaching you to seek him through it all. If you remove every hindrance, amen, we might mess around and stop praying. But the word is saying, man, I'll always pray what? Not to faint. Hmm? If, if, we could, if we could do everything, we wouldn't ask him for nothing because we wouldn't need God if we could do everything. But the truth is, we can't do nothing without God. Why? Because that's what the word, word says. Without God, you can do nothing. That's what Jesus said in the book of John, chapter 15. We need the Lord. And we got to have the Lord. And God has made himself available. But sometimes, we act like he don't exist. Solomon, amen, as a young man being anointed to be the king of Israel, God came to him and asked him a question, and, 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 and what can I do for you? And Solomon answered the question, make me wise that I might lead your people. And as wise as King Solomon was, and he was wise because the Bible said that God made him wise to any man who ever lived except one, the other one was Jesus Christ. But in Solomon's wisdom, Solomon did some foolish things. One of the things that Solomon did that was foolish, he followed his own heart. Y'all hear that? Y'all hear that a lot, don't you? People tell other folks to follow your heart. Amen. It sounds good, it sounds nice, but it's just as wrong as wrong can be. And the reason why, because the Bible says in the Word, in Jeremiah chapter 17, the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? He said, I, the Lord, search the heart. God searches the heart, and he got to look hard to it. Because Jesus said, the Bible said about Jesus, he knows what's in man. He knows the evil that is within us. He knows our corruption. He knows our need for our a Savior. Jesus knows. And the reason we know he knows because of what the Word says. This Solomon began to follow his heart. He didn't use the wisdom that God gave him. And today, I want you to look around and see that most people live and follow their what? They follow their heart. And you might say, why do that, Ray? Well, go over to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4. The Bible says, uh, they were not in there. What? Sound what? Doctrine. In other words, they will turn away from the what? The word of God. And if you don't follow God's word, you're going to follow somebody's word. Huh? Some folk follow the politician word. They hang out with everything the politician says. Some folk follow the celebrity word. They, 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 they may bounce a basketball, they may catch a football, or they may be a singer or an actor. Some folk hang on to every word somebody else got to say. But I ain't but one word that said in the beginning, let them be and it was so. And what mama, it wasn't daddy, it wasn't your sister, brother, it wasn't a politician, it was Jesus, the word incarnate. The word of God matters. But Solomon decided he was going to do whatever was in his heart. And he began to turn away from the word of God. Like people have today. Even the church don't have listened to the word of God. And you might say, well, how do you know that preacher? Oh, that's what the Bible says. <laughs> huh? That's what the Bible says. And even God's people are occasion to turn away from the word of God. Even when God was leading them through the wilderness, he was teaching them how to respect and honor the word of God. And the reason for the word of God, my brothers and my sisters, is God is teaching us how to relate to him, and God is teaching us how to relate to one word. Another. When you read the Ten Commandments, the first part of the commandments teach you who God is and how to relate to God. The second part of the Ten Commandments teach you about how to relate to your neighbor. What Jesus said, the, the, the two greatest commandments, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. He said, on these hang all the law and the prophets. What matters is the word. Of God. I want you to be careful. There are people today who call themselves Christians. And they love to talk about God. 
They love to say, I'm past, I'm praying to God. God called you to do more than just pray. God also called you to obey. And so we got Christians, and when they want something, they call on the Lord. They want his line to say, what do you want to say? He's on the main line, just tell him. But see, when he called back, he get a bit this, you know. When he called back, they, they won't answer the phone. When he get called back, it's been disconnected. When he called back, they don't somebody, we want to call him, but when he called, I, I ain't got time. I, I, I got to go over here. I got to, I got to go over here. Lord have mercy. When he called back, he can't get nobody to answer the phone. What they do, they give him a password number. They say, we pay him. <laughs> we pay him to answer the call. Help somebody. He got to preach the word. He got to visit the city. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He got to go to the jail. He got to go to the head of the highway. But guess what? If I'm out there, you supposed to be right behind him. Because the Bible said that I'm an under shepherd. You supposed to be following your pastor. If I can visit the city, you can visit the city. If I can go to the jail cell, you can go there. the word of God. Solomon got sidetracked because he was listening to the words of his own heart. When he started listening to the words of his own heart, he messed around and married 700 women. And not only did he marry 700 women, he had 300 girlfriends. Huh? Or side piece, or whatever y'all call them. Huh? That's a thousand. When did he do that? He did that when he was not listening to the word of the Lord. He not only, amen, married. All them women that chased all them women to you know how it felt to get drunk. Because he said I eat, drink, and be merry. Yeah. Huh? Because this is the gift of life. But I don't know if anybody been in here drunk. If you've been drunk, you can't hold a thing straight. And, and the Bible teaches now that. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a, and a sound mind. And so if you're out of your mind, uh, that's not what God called you to do. Our young people today, amen, some of them get drunk, but a lot of them likely to get high. And I ain't talking about on Jesus. Hello, somebody. And, 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 and why? Because they won't listen to the word of God. They, they'll say, hey, Rev, I, I like to forget about my my problem, so I'm gonna go get my head back. Y'all ain't y'all seen that, y'all. <laughs> Somebody should have testified that. Real, the things I what I used to do, I what I don't do them no more. Uh, but that's what that's how people react, amen. When when they reject the word of God, they gotta find some other kind of way to deal with their problems. But, but I, I'm, I'm just a little poor pitiful preacher. I'm, I'm still looking to the hills from what come my help because all of my help comes from the Lord. I, I can't lie. Now, I tasted some liquor. I, I tasted some beer, amen, but I never got drunk. I guess it wasn't God's will for my life. Uh, but I thank God, amen, that he kept me from falling down that deep. But I can't brag because I got my own sin. Everybody that sinned and comes short of the Lord of God. One person might be struggling with something and there's another person that's struggling with something else. But the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because they can't nobody grow and act like they better than anybody else because we all been down in the mud puddle of sin. But if you know what the word says, he's able to reach down. Anybody know he'll reach way down and 
ball. But Lord have mercy, you ain't gonna be able to play baseball in hell. You're not gonna be able to run and score that touchdown in the flames. You ain't gonna hit, you ain't gonna be able to shoot that jumper, the one down, down there, and down there in hellfire. You got to, you got to seek the Lord while he may be found. The Bible says, call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. In other words, you got to remember what the text said. He said, remember your creator when you're a young person. Because this is what God knows. The older we get, the more set in our ways we become. We get to where we don't want to do nothing but what we want to do. But when you meet God in an early age, and you let him walk with you, and you let him talk with you, he'll give you a humble heart. He'll give you a proud mind, a kind mind. He'll give you a heart that will go with God all the way. Because when you done got stuck in your ways, say, Rev, I would read the Bible, but I done got old now. The Bible is good when you're young, and the Bible is good when you're old. The Bible is good on your death note. You can repeat the song number 23 when you're taking your last breath. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He made me not out and weep, pastors. He leads me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not scared because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You are not my head with all. My cup is running over. Surely, even on my death day, goodness and mercy is following me, and I shall dwell. Seek the Lord before you get old, before you get tired of living, before you go through problems, before you have pain, before you die. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. You say, preacher, what's wrong with the church? We're not seeking God like we supposed to. And the reason we're not seeking God like we supposed to, because we done turned away from his word. And so God warned the preacher. And he warned the preacher. And y'all like to remind the preacher what it, of what he's supposed to do. He said, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exalt, with all long suffering and doctrine. What's so funny about it? When he do what he said, when the preacher do what he, he told him to do, then he get mad. You say the preacher think he more than other folk. The preacher think he the only one say. The preacher think he the only one. That's when he just do what when he just do what he say. Who you think you is, preacher? I've been raised by one woman. You don't tell me what the, what I'm supposed to do. You just do what I'm what you supposed to do. And guess what? When you go back and read the text, he told me to preach it to you. He said, when you want to hear it, and when you didn't want to hear it, he said, if it make you mad, or if it make you bad, he told me to preach it to you. You know why? Because he knows some of us is still dead. He knows some of us is hard-hearted. He said, if they would not do a sound doctrine, they don't want to get another pastor that scratch the engineer. They want to get somebody. Go tell them that the best thing is life bread. They want to get somebody. They tell them all you got to do is ask, and God will give it to you. But baby, you won't leave out the fact that not only do you need to ask, you need to live right. If you're going to ask God for something, make sure you live it right. If you ain't living right, you need to ask God, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for my sin. Bring me what I ought to be. I know I need you.
gives understanding to the simple. You know what the word says? When David was thinking about, amen, the word, and needed direction, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. And he said on another place, all of my steps in your word. Some folk look to Facebook and see what other folk doing. They just follow Facebook. Some folk look to Instagram and see what the Instagram influencers are doing. They just do what the folk doing on Instagram. I look to Matthew and I look to Mark and I look to Luke and I look to John and I look to Acts and I look to Romans and I look to Corinthians and I look to Galatians. I look to Philippians. I look to Colossians. Anybody, anybody look to the word like I do when you wake me up in the morning. I can't go and look at the TV. I got to find my Bible. I got to look in Isaiah. Anybody know that I've been going through Isaiah? If you've been reading them texts that I've been sending you, I've been reading through Isaiah. Why? Because the Lord is taking me all the way from Genesis, all the way to Revelation. When I look at Genesis, I found out where I started from. When I look at Revelation, I found out where we end up. Anybody thank God for the word. He'll let you know where you're headed before you get there. Anybody is glad for the word of God. Solomon said, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. I can't tell you nothing but what God done taught me. I got a teacher. His name is the Holy Spirit. He's over there in the book of 1 John, chapter 2. The Bible said, if you want to be taught, there's a word in the Bible. Jesus said, I'm going to give you another comforter. He's going to lead and guide you of the all truth. Anybody God, anybody thank God that you got a God that will lead you from earth to glory. I'm talking about nothing but the word of God. If you want to know how to go to glory, you got to read the Bible. In the Bible, it talks about how to be saved. The Bible said, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. The Bible said, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, the Bible said, thou shalt be saved. I don't know about you, but I thank God for the word of God. I'm not trying to follow no man, because ain't no man got no heaven and no hell to put me in. But when I read the text, I hear Jesus say, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, but he also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And I'm glad, sweet below, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. Anybody glad? You ain't got to depend on no man to get you the glory. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. I don't know about you, but I'm satisfied, I'm satisfied, I'm satisfied when Jesus in his presence in the fullness of joy. I don't wait for Sister Reed to get me crunk. I don't need the church to say amen when I'm preaching. I get joy just doing what God called me to do. I get joy in being talked about. I get joy in being lied on. I get joy in being criticized. He said, Presley, when men revile you and persecute you and say all men of evil against you falsely, for my name's sake, he said, Rejoice and be exceeding glad. I'm talking about the word of God. If you need healing, it's in the word. The Bible said he sent his word and it has healed us. Is anybody healed? I'm healed down in my spirit. Anybody healed? I got Jesus down on the inside. I'm all right. Don't worry about Larry. Larry's name been written in the Lamb Book of Life. I'm just buying my time trying to do what he called me to do. Because one day I'm going to hear a word. Larry, it's time for you to take a trip. You want to come where I am. I got to close my eyes. I got to take my last breath. And I'm on my way to glory. Read my note. But the Bible 
saved, to be active from the body, to be pregnant with the Lord. Don't worry about Larry. If you don't see me preaching down here, don't worry about Larry. If you don't see me sweeping down here, I'll be somewhere around God's throne. Everybody thank God for the word of God. His word saved me. His word made me. And Lord have mercy. Everybody glad for the word of God. They hung the word upon the cross. It looked like the word of God has failed. Did y'all hear what I said? They nailed the word to the cross. They tried to kill the word. Some folks tried to burn the word. Some folks tried to drown the word. But what did Jesus say? Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word shall never pass away. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and full of truth. You can't kill the word. You can't stop the word. You can't hinder the word. The word will run over you. And on judgment day, Jesus said in John 12, 48, the same words that's coming out my mouth. They're going to judge you on judgment day. Why are you worried about what folk think about you? They word can't put you in the hell. And they word can't put you in the hell. I'm trying to hear. What my Savior said, he said, boy, be not faithful unto death, and I'll give you a crown. Anybody want to trade your cross in on your crown? I've got a crown that's waiting on me, and I'm just trying to carry my little cross until I hear it say, well done. Good and faithful seven. You've been faithful over a few days. I think the rulers over many days, they hung it high. They spent it Wine. Look like the word had died, but early on Sunday morning, the word starts speaking one more time. All power in heaven and earth is in my hand. He's Alpha, He's Omega, He's the beginning, He's the end, He's the first, He's the last, He's God. Anybody know Him? Have you tried Him? Do you know Him for yourself? You can't live without Him. What matters in life? The word. Oh God. If I ask you, do you love God? Can you tell me you do? you'll never read his word. Can you, can you see? We got too many mouth Christians. All they do is talk. If you're telling me you love God but you never read his word, you ain't loving God. You're loving your thoughts of who God is to you. The problem is who you think God is to you does not bear out in his word can't get you inside heaven's gates. Jesus said, search the scripture. For in them you think you have eternal life. And they be they that testify of me. Jesus said, those people that love him are not those that are always talking about how much they love him, but those that show it by doing his will. Them the one that love God. Just run around talking about how much you love him. You ain't know what he told you. His word ain't good enough for you. Huh? Cut them words and love sometimes. Huh? Cut them game shows up. Cut the six o'clock news. They ain't they giving up the bad news no way. Do you not know that the good news outweighs all the world bad news? That if you're saved in Christ, you're going to a place where there ain't no bad news, ain't no death, huh? Ain't no sorrow, ain't no pain, ain't no tears, 
and no remembrance of the former thing. Ain't no cancer. Ain't no high blood pressure. Ain't no diabetes. Ain't no giving up the right for the wrong. Ain't nobody scandalizing you. Ain't nobody criticizing you. Ain't nobody lying on you. That's where the word gonna take you. That's where the word gonna take you. But this other thing I like about the word. The word is so loving. He'll never make you do nothing. It's that one thing. That one thing you're going to be made to do. At the name of Jesus. Every knee going to bow. And every tongue going to confess. Really, there's two things you're going to be made to do. If you reject him and after you bow, the angel going to come and drag you to hell against your will. Because he said some of them will be like, Lord, didn't I? did I do many wonderful works? Be your name? Huh? He going to say what? The word going to say what? I never, I never do you. But let me tell you about me in the word. I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to go to church. I didn't want to hear no choir singing. I didn't want to hear no deacon praying. I didn't want to hear no preacher preaching. But I thank God for a praying mother. And I thank God for a wife that went ahead away. When I was rejecting the word, some folk kept obeying the word. And because they obeyed the word, God moved in my life. The parents, do you hear me? Your children may not be doing what you want them to do. Your husband or your wife may not be doing what you want, what you want to do. But you keep doing what the word told you to do. And God can change their heart. God can save their soul. The reason why? Because I'm a living testimony. I wasn't giving God no time. I wasn't giving God no glory. But folk kept obeying the word. And God changed me. If he did it for me, Paul said, I was a chief of my sinners. If he did it for me, he can do it for everybody in your life. But you can't give up on the word of God. Because when you don't give up on the word of God, there is no other help. There is no other hope. You are made by the word. This building that you see, this wood, where the wood come from? He said to the trees, come forth, let there be trees. And guess what the wood come forth? This cloth that you're sitting on, God told Moses, I got me in to know how to sow. God put it in them. Everything you see came from this word, the word of God. You might say, preacher, how am I still here? Because the word that said it was time for you to go. All the accidents you've been through, all the breakups you've been through, all the all the wrongdoing you've been through, God, the word said they're not tired yet. Because when it's time, ain't nothing you can do to stay. When the word said your time is up, you got to go. Now let me tell you this about the word. When you sit there convicted and feeling condemned, good. That's what the word did. But see, here's the good part of the word. He don't want you to stay convicted and condemned. He wants to forgive you and set you free. That's what the word is for. His mercy do what? What the word is for? His word mercy do what? Forever. And it don't matter how many times you don't feel back in that mud puddle. His arm is outstretched what? To see him. Come unto me all ye that labor. What? He said, I will give you. Y'all hear what Jesus said? No matter how many times you're a man in that mud puddle city, he said, come unto me. I know you're burdened. I know you're tired. I know you're frustrated. I know you're irritated. And I know how much I love you. I prove it when I died on the cross for your sin. You sit there feeling convicted and condemned, you ain't got to stay in that place. I've been a preacher sitting in the pulpit. And the preacher was preaching and really stepped all over my toe. <laughs> huh? 
wanted me to do was acknowledge what he put in the preacher's mouth to say that convicted me of my sin and repent. Then say what? Go what? Sin no more. Don't go back and keep doing the same thing. Because the longer you stay out there, the hardest going to be to turn loose. That's why, that's why Solomon said, when you're young, because God knows, by the time we get older, we say, well, I'm going to die anyway. I'm not going to die. Everybody's going to die suffering. You know what they say? No. I want to die happy. The only way to die happy, you got to die safe. And so I can't let nothing or nobody get in between me and the Lord. Not my wife. Not my children. Not my mama. Not even my father, baby. I can't let nobody get between me and the Lord. I got to do what's right here nobody else do. Huh? That's what I got to do. I can't preach it to you. If I don't live it, that'll make me a hypocrite. My preaching will have no power. Speak what you know. Testify to what you see. Are you saved? The only way you say you got to go through the Word. There's no other way. And you can't go through your way. Because again, I'm going to tell you, a lot of people got a false religion that's based on Christ, but not based in Christ. Preach, I was, I, was, I was saved when I was little. And ain't doing nothing today that God's Word says. No, baby. If you're not convicted of your sin, the Bible says there's no evidence of the Holy Spirit in your life. But you said the Spirit will reprove the world of sin. If you've been born again, the Spirit will convict you of your sin and make you feel sorrow and shame. The book says in the book of Romans chapter 2 that the Holy Spirit will lead you to be what? God is what? Sorrowful. If you can sin and you ain't got no shame in your sin, you don't know the Lord. Okay, how many times you done been to church? How many times you been in the baptism pool? How many times you done read the Bible? There's some folk that know the Bible going to hell and the devil one of them. The devil know the word. He just don't know the, the Lord of the word as his Savior. Just because you can quote scripture don't mean nothing if you ain't living it. I done begged for nothing. Just preach the job, though. It's my job to be. God don't, the word says God is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. If you ain't saved, you can be saved. All you gotta do is give it to the word. Paul said, let it have free course. Let me let the word do whatever you want to do with your life. The word will move your membership to another church. The word will make you change careers and do something to pay to take that make less money than what you're doing now. That's what the word will do. And then it won't let you miss a meal being paid. Don't, don't won't let you miss a meal being eaten. That's what the word will do. But you got to trust the word. It's more than coming to church. You got to put your trust in the word. Because you can't make without the word. I said I was too big. It's hard to stop big. You need prayer? Come around the altar. The Bible said pray one for another. The Bible said pray without ceasing. And don't feel no shame. Come around the altar for prayer. Jesus nailed our sin and shame to the cross. Everybody standing. God, I want to thank you for your word. Your word helps me know who I am. I'm made in your image. Made in your likeness. Your word helps me know whose I am. I belong to you. For I repented of my sin. I called on your name. But even that you died on that cross, to save me from my sin. The Bible declares that I am saved, not hoping to be saved, not trying to be saved, but I am saved. 
not by my words, but by your grace. And Lord, I'm thankful for your word. When you gave me your word, I started knowing I was somebody. Because before your word, I didn't know who I was. Didn't have nothing to say to nobody. Not for one page to shut up. That's all because of your word. I thank you for what you've done in my life. And I thank you for what you've done not only in my life, but all of those who love you. All the people that love you, you still working in us. You still transforming us. You still molding and shaping us into who you desire for us to be. I love your word. Your word is my life. Your word quickens me. Your word makes me happy. Sometimes your word makes me sad. When I see myself falling short of your expectations. When I see myself not being who you call me to be. But then your word make me glad. Because you said all I got to do is just acknowledge that. Acknowledge that I sin and come short of your expectation. And ask your forgiveness and you forgive me every time. So I'm free. Because your word has set me free. You said you are my disciple if you continue my word and you should know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And then you said whom the Son of Man said free. Free indeed. <laughs> free indeed. I'm free, Lord. I'm free. Bless all these who stand in this place. Everybody in here got a need. Some folk got some secret struggles. They don't share with nobody. We have them to know your word already discovered it. Because your word is quick and powerful, sharper than the two-edged sword, dividing the sons of the joints and the marrow, and the soul and the spirit. And the discernment of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Bible said all of us are naked before you. It ain't nothing your word can't search out that's in us. You know our every need. You know our every struggle. But you are our every need. You're the actor for every struggle. In you, we don't have no struggle because you are strength. It ain't nothing weak about you. Take us from this place. Help us get to our destination safe and sound. And find everything well. What matters most in life? Knowing Christ. Loving the people you put in our life. And having honor and respect toward the word. Because everything we do is coming up again. The believers should stand before the judgment seat of Christ to get our rewards for our living and to be exposed for our own. The good news is, in that expo exposing, it's not to throw us away. You just don't reward us according to our faithfulness. But the unbelievers, they got to stand in judgment too before the white throne. And everything will be revealed. Their rejection of you, their hatred toward you, because anybody who rejects you hates you. Because the Bible said we will love the one and hate the other. And everybody's secret is going to be exposed on that day. But the righteous shall hear you say, well done. Despite the fact you know we wasn't perfect. But the fact that we was in you was our perfection. Our righteousness is not of our works. Our righteousness is what you did from the cross through the grave. The just shall live by faith. Thank you for your word. Strengthen us, heal us, forgive us, guide us. Make us what you want us to be by your word. In the name of our every name, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and ask God. Now to him that is able to keep us from falling, present us swallow before the presence of his glory with his seed of joy. The only wise God, our Savior, to him be glory, man, to me, and power of now and forever. All the people said, Amen. 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 God be with you, go in peace.